Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken, and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one, who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. <clears throat> Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. Verbum Domini. On this solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we honor the charity, the love that Christ has for each of us. In the book of the prophet Jeremiah, God says to us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. This everlasting love of God for us led him to become one of us in the incarnation. Led him to give himself to us as our spiritual nourishment in the Holy Eucharist and to let him to suffer and die for our salvation. And the heart is particularly chosen as a focus for our devotion to the Sacred Heart because it's the natural sign of love. It's a symbol of Christ's love for us. And his heart is a symbol of charity and appears surrounded in flames. It's inflamed with burning love for us. So the purpose of this great solemnity is to celebrate and honor the love of God for us and to make a grateful return of that love back to God. This is what the saints did. They received the love of God and they sought to make a return for that love. They were absolutely convinced of God's love for them and they wanted to return it. And there are two passages in the gospel that are foundational texts for devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The first is our Lord's invitation in Matthew 11, when he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So our Lord invites us to seek after his own heart, and it's there that we will find rest. It's there that we will find strength in our spiritual lives. And the second passage is Christ's sacred heart being pierced on the cross by the soldier's lance in John 19. There's also a connection between the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Holy Eucharist. Very simply, the Holy Eucharist is the whole Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity, <clears throat> with his human heart, which is living and is still enkindled, still burning with love for us. St. Margaret Mary Alacoque will always be linked to devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. When she was 24 years old, she entered the Order of the Visitation in Paris le Monial in France, which was a congregation of nuns founded by St. Francis de Sales and St. Jane Francis de Chantal. And our Lord revealed to Margaret Mary the secrets of his Sacred Heart. And in one of the most famous apparitions that she received from the Lord, the Lord revealed his heart to her and said, Here is the heart that has so loved men as to spare nothing, 
exhausting and consuming itself in order to prove its love for them. And in return, I receive from most of them only ingratitude. So how often do we take the Lord and his graces and his blessings for granted? We can easily fall into indifference or ingratitude when we get wrapped up in attachment, especially when we get wrapped up in attachment to material possessions and the things of this world. We can easily develop unhealthy attachments to other people as well. We can very easily fall into complaining. It's very easy to complain about the cross, about difficulties we experience, about what we don't have, rather than thanking God for his countless blessings every day. And so one way to grow in our love for God and our devotion to the Sacred Heart is to cultivate the virtue of gratitude. Gratitude has been called the memory of the heart. It's remembering the good things that God has given us, the good things he's done for us, and expressing thanksgiving in return, expressing that to him. As we grow in gratitude, we become more aware that everything we have is a gift from God. St. Paul asks in his first letter to the Corinthians, what have you that you did not receive? Every good thing is from God. And sometimes it takes us a while to realize that something truly is a gift. Maybe it's a particular illness or a heavy cross that we've had to endure for a very long time. And perhaps looking back, we can see how we actually grew in our faith during that time. We actually prayed more fervently. So we hear, I remember in the agony, our Lord's agony in the garden, he prayed more fervently as he was suffering, right? In, in that communion with his heavenly father. And so in that sense, it's an invitation for us to pray more fervently when we are experiencing the cross, when we're experiencing suffering. It can be easier to call upon God for help, and it's in the deeper trust in him. And when the cross gets heavy, which it does at times, we can realize more clearly that we need God. We need his grace. We need his assistance. And that's a grace. Just that realization is a grace. It's a gift. So even the trials and sufferings of life can be gifts that strengthen us. We recall, as St. Therese would famously say, everything is grace. Right? Some are more clearly and more, they're more clearly perceived or they're more obvious than others. But even the sufferings and trials are gifts that God is permitting us. Because he also, when he permits the trial, he also gives us the grace to persevere through it. That's a means of our sanctification, our purification, our growth in holiness. And on this solemnity, we can also reflect on Christ and his desire to bring us healing. He wants to lift us out of the depths of our misery. There are many times in the Gospels when Christ healed people physically by his divine power. Even more so, he desires to heal our souls. That's much more important. And what needs to be healed first and foremost is our pride. Our pride is the root of everything that we do that offends God. It blinds us, and it seeks to praise. It seeks praise for ourselves rather than seeking praise for God. And the sin of pride is destructive. It's a destructive spiritual disease in our hearts and our souls. And the Lord wants to heal us of that. Christ comes to heal our souls. He is the divine physician. And in order to heal us, God became flesh and made for himself a meek and humble heart. Right? And that was formed from the meek and humble heart of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which we celebrate tomorrow. But humility is the remedy for the wound of pride that afflicts our hearts and our souls. And if we want to be healed, we have to be humble before God and be humble toward one another. It's the humility of our Lord that shows us the path that we must take to heal our souls. And it's in the gift and the sacrament of confession that we get an opportunity to humble ourselves, right? To humbly accuse ourselves of our pride and our sins. And that's where we allow the grace and the blood of Christ to wash and to cleanse our souls, to heal us. And it's in confession that the sacred heart of Jesus lifts us up and he relieves our misery and our spiritual sickness. And what does our Lord want of us today on this feast? Well, he desires us to make a return of his great love for us. St. Claude de Colombier, who was the spiritual director of St. Margaret Mary, he directed the following words to the Lord in a prayer. He said, O oh God, what will you do to conquer the fearful hardness of our hearts? 
Lord, you must give us new hearts, tender hearts, sensitive hearts, to replace hearts that are made of marble and of bronze. So we return Christ's love for us by seeking to love him wholeheartedly and sacrificially, and daily trying to conform and to submit our will to his will. We can also make a return of that love to him by putting his words into action. Remember he said very clearly in the Gospels, if you love me, keep my commandments. He also told us to love one another as he has loved us. In addition, today is also the World Day of Prayer for the Sanctification of Priests. This was established by Pope St. John Paul II as he invited all to pray for priests. It's very fitting to pray for priests today on the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart, as we recall the words of St. John Vianney, and he said that the priesthood is the love of the heart of Jesus. So we pray today that all priests throughout the world may be more effective witnesses of Christ's love for us. And you all are welcome again, as Father Joseph mentioned yesterday, to join us, if you're able, shortly after the Mass at 8.15 Central Time, to pray the rosary for the sanctification of priests. As we continue to celebrate the solemnity, we ask the Sacred Heart of Jesus to set our hearts on fire with a greater love for him, and that filled with gratitude, we may also imitate his love for us by likewise loving others sacrificially. <laughs>